Hi there, Jamie with you again. I hope you're very well indeed. Thank you for joining me on Talking Sonics. Now, the last video I spoke about was all about microphones and the audio signal chain and how to record and what's required. You know, obviously the source, the music source, but then moving on to the right microphone for that source. And the next in the chain is mic preamplifiers. And that's what I want to talk about today and the importance of mic preamplifiers. So in terms of audio quality, the microphone preamp is one of the most important things in the signal chain. Now this could be a standalone mic preamplifier or a really high quality mixing console which has good quality preamps built in like this beautiful Chilton QM3 British built console behind me which uh, is a bit of a gem I found maybe something on that uh, I'll do a video on that coming up but getting back to the task at hand so some mic preamps to consider I've written down a few here and there's going to be an interesting similarity let's see if you can pick up what they are one Vintec two another brand called Aurora Audio um, Neve or Rupert Neve designs Focusrite and Amec. Can you pick up the similarity? Yes, if you do know your mic preamps, you'll know a little bit about Rupert Neve, who was a fantastic, world famous um, designer of audio Class A circuits. And I'm going to explain a little bit about what Class A is. But uh, first, let me say, rest in peace, Rupert, who uh, recently passed away. Um, very sad news, but what a legacy he's brought to the world music industry with his fantastic products of consoles and compressors and lovely audio sounding devices which have very smooth musical EQs and all sorts of luscious things. Great to hear that his team in Texas are going to carry on with the company and follow his plan and, uh, and his legacy. So, fantastic. So, I've pointed out Rupert Neve designed or brands that um, basically use a Rupert Neve um, Class A audio circuit. And this is really kind of key. Uh, so what is Class A? Well, that's a really quite a hard thing to describe. But we're talking about products that were designed in the 70s initially. So what happened in the 70s? Transistors were invented um, as opposed to um, tube tube uh, preamplifiers. Not that I'm saying that tube preamps are bad, but I'm just going down the path of a preferred source for me, that is the Rupert Neve style preamp. Ultimately, the simplest way to explain it, as far as I'm aware of, as far as I've researched in my little way, that, that with Class A circuitry, it's a style of circuitry, and with this circuitry, the transistor in the circuit is always switched on. Whether there's a low input source, whether there's no audio input source, no microphone or no line level plugged into that channel, the transistor is always on. Now, the job of the transistor is to basically amplify the signal. So you'd be sort of talking about millivolts coming out of, out of a microphone like this. Uh, so the job of a transistor or a microphone preamp is to boost that signal to around one volt um, prior to it going through your audio um, AD converter or into your tape machine. So the thing about the always on concept of class A with the transistor being always on is that if there's no audio source or no sound being inputted so therefore nothing to be um, reproduced or, or amplified as such what happens is the transistor turns its energy into heat energy so if you've ever been around an old console like this or a, uh, a Neve console you <laughs> may, may feel that it's a bit of a heater if it's left on in a room um, if it's not being used it does get warm so interesting little thing about class A so I mean that's one thing but um, inherently the the design topology of um, of these circuits was to have a much cleaner audio signal path um, and a higher bandwidth now Part of that bandwidth was due to large transformer inputs. So larger amounts of uh, copper and coils doing a wonderful job and really treating that microphone or, or audio source with a lot of care. Um, when I say high bandwidth, I mean audio going as low as the human ear can hear, um, 20 hertz or even below, and all the way up to you know, 20,000 kilohertz 
very high frequencies or even higher. So um, anything that was possibly coming from the microphone is reproduced by that Class A audio circuit. And look, the design of Class A products is generally very, very low distortion levels. Um, in some cases, it's all about a flat response. So what you put in is what you get out in terms of frequency response. Um, but, you know, the thing about the Rupert Neve designs, um, and I would say that this Chilton mixer behind me is kind of a bit of a baby Neve, as some people have mentioned, um, based on its EQ curve. And this is about very broad, high and low shelving EQ. Um, that's very warm and musical sounding and that is something that a class A audio preamp can do for you. It can make your microphone sound luscious or thick or fat or just just really really nice to work with. So of course class A mic preamplifiers are expensive. We're talking two and a half, three, five or six thousand dollars or more just very expensive devices. If we're getting into the Neve stuff now, it's collectible, of course, from the 70s, and you're paying a lot of money if you can find it in good condition. So, um, yeah, you're paying a lot of money for it. You could go for other reproductions, um, but you're going to be paying a lot of money. So are there any other choices? Well, yes, there are. Um, lower cost mixers like this Children Behind Me, which, again, are very rare, but are good and have Class A mic preamplifiers in them but also have a look out for the 90s first release versions of the Very Low Noise or VZM Mackie mixers. Now, I've produced a couple of albums on these that have sweet musical EQ, extremely low noise and high headroom. So, um, very good dynamic range when I say high headroom. So, great mixers to look out for. Now, one that's not Class A that is a little bit noisy um, are some early um, 1980s um, Yamaha live consoles, live mixing consoles. I'll dig up a photo and show one here. Um, and they have lovely musical EQ. Not as clean, great for recording drums because you don't need to boost the gain as much. I wouldn't recommend these on vocals. But for other things like bass... Um, amps or guitar amps and drum kits, some lovely musical EQ and some good interesting preamps. Of course really high quality transformer inputs on those devices. So have a look out for these. These are available at low cost around the traps whether you're on eBay or other sites. Look out for these older mixers and you can certainly pick up a bargain and put them before your AD converter in your recording signal chain and have some fun. See what they can do. So what you put in is what you get out. And while I'm talking about great microphones, in the previous video I, I spoke of microphones and classic microphones, that's one thing. The mic preamp, of course, is treating the microphone source well, amplifying it well, um, perhaps adding some nice musical EQ to it as well. But all of this means nothing if you don't have a good audio source. So think about what you're recording. Um, turn the equipment off, turn your mics off, and have a listen to your audio source. Listen to that, um, that guitar amplifier. Is the tone there? Are the strings new on your guitar? Um, really think about um, the tuning your drums or, or mic position and placement. What does the room acoustics sound like? Work on those attributes first because that is what your microphone initially hears. The source is really the king of this. Now, when I was younger, I had a very interesting experience recording music because it was, well, you know, a learning curve. It was experimental, but also quite frustrating at times. And this is based on the fact that I didn't really think about that audio source. Um, and then slowly as I decided to work a bit harder on mic placement, on making sure there was fresh guitar strings on a guitar, or tuning a drum kit, or positioning a drum kit in a nice sounding room, thinking about room acoustics, all of a sudden the source, the things that I was recording, sounded nicer and recorded more beautifully. Um, but early on I did not have Class A mic preamplifiers and there was something lacking. I found that I had quite a bit of um, distortion in my recordings. Um, there was a sort of a harsh or brittleness to it based on that distortion and I couldn't EQ it out. There was a, a level of build-up of distortion, frustration, um, particularly in that 4K high mid-frequency ear-piercing uh, frequency spectrum. That 
you know, it was hard to make smooth. Also, with the upper register 10, 12K stuff, um, hard to make it smooth. And then, fortunately, I landed um, finding a Neve console. So have a look at my video. Um, I'll leave in the comments below about being the audio detective and finding a beautiful Neve console in Melbourne. But after using this Neve console, it was really like a aha moment, a revelation to me that uh, really that is something of just here we go. I can't even explain it. It's sheer magic, um, sheer magic with Neves. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, life changed for me after using these. Um, I found that I had to EQ things less. I found that I could just stick a microphone in front of my source, put it through a good Class A mic preamplifier, and wow, the sound was there. There was very little to be done. Um, as I progressed and got used to using them, I EQ'd things much less. Maybe I might notch some low end out of a floor tom or a kick drum, some low mid-range, some rumble, but often not much else would happen. Maybe a little bit of high shelving 10K boosted EQ or 100 hertz bottom end on a guitar. Not that much EQing at all. Really, I started to think about the correct microphone source and then mic placement and you know, the, the preamps kind of looked after me and I think that's the, the beauty of them. Um, if you can find a good console or a mic preamplifier, they will look after you and make your recordings come to life. So remember, sure, you can go and spend your thousands on Neve-style uh, Class A mic preamplifiers, but you can also pick up the very low-noise Mackie consoles from the 90s, the very early 90s, about 91, I think, 92. Um... And, um, yeah, my other tip is the old Yamahas. So have a play around. Um, the Yamahas are not Class A, as I've mentioned, but uh, have a look and compare. If you can save your pennies for uh, something Neve-ish, do your research there, and I'm sure you'll find them to be a fantastic, um, a joyful, um, musically uplifting something for your musical world. So... There you are. That's mic preamplifiers. Really important in your signal chain. Um, not as important as your musical source or your microphone, but you know the third piece of the chain um, prior to your AD converter or tape machine. So think about mic preamplifiers very seriously. If you're not using good mic preamplifiers now, by all means, go and grab one. Thanks for joining me on Talking Sonics. I will see you again soon. Thanks for joining me.